Since the dawn of time, kids have always wanted to be rock stars. From the Beatles forever changing the world in the 60s to the shredding guitar solos of the 80s and movies like Crossroads and in particular Bill and Ted popularizing air guitar, every kid has wanted to be a rock star at one point or another in their lifetime. It wasn't until 2005, though, that this dream could be fully realized when video game developer Harmonix released their smash success, Guitar Hero, to pretty much universal critical acclaim. For the first time, you could feel like a true rock star, holding the Gibson SG peripheral in your hands, ripping through world-famous songs from legendary bands. Oh my God, it was amazing. Only one year later, in 2006, Harmonix would release Guitar Hero 2, which only further popularized the franchise, and between the first two games, exposed an entire generation to some of the greatest music ever that we weren't around for. Everything from Ozzy to Blue Oyster Cult, White Zombie, Motley Crue, I could go on and on for hours. The series even spawned some careers for a few bands, most notably, of course, Dragon Force. Anyways... Buried deep in the bonus track section was a song called Jordan, a four-minute masterclass of shred recorded specifically for Guitar Hero 2 by one of the greatest guitarists to ever live, Buckethead. So today, we are going to take a look at who Brian Carroll was before he donned the KFC bucket and white mask and became Buckethead. Taking a look at Buckethead's bizarre persona and how strange he seems to be on some of his recordings, including his Secret Recipe DVD, uh, which, by the way, I got for Christmas one year, and it had a feature on it where uh, you could click and he would talk, but when you clicked it, it threw out an error and totally closed the DVD. Anyways, you might think that he had uh, not necessarily a, a bad upbringing, but certainly a unique one, but by all accounts, he had a pretty normal childhood. He grew up in Huntington Beach with four siblings, uh, three sisters, one brother. His father, who has now sadly passed away along with his mother, was the athletic director at Damien High School in Laverne, California for 40 years, from 1973 to 2013. All pretty normal stuff. When he was a teenager in the 80s, Brian moved with his family to Claremont, California, and that's when he started to get serious at guitar after learning how to play the basics from an elderly man who was his neighbor. He then began to learn the ways of his idols, such as Ingve Malmsteen, Angus Young, Randy Rhodes, and later on Jennifer Batten, who was Michael Jackson's guitarist from 1987 to 1997. Uh, and Brian also had a number of notable guitar teachers, including, of course, Paul Gilbert, Pepper Brown, and Joey Tofola, who played with Jack Panzer and Graham Bonnet, uh, as well as others. Growing up, Brian had a number of other interests outside of music, including horror movies, martial arts, comic books, and basketball, all of which have also had an impact in a few different avenues of his career, with arguably his best-known song, Jordan, uh, which I mentioned earlier from Guitar Hero 2, being inspired by Michael Jordan, uh, he incorporates nunchucks into his live shows. And of course, the character of Buckethead was derived from an iconic horror movie character. But I'll get to that in just a few moments. In the late 80s, Brian played in a band called Class X, uh, which I believe was a cover band. There's very limited and poor quality footage of this out there. And there's definitely people who don't think this is real. They don't think this is Brian playing. But here's a quick snippet and you can decide for yourself. <laughs> It wasn't until 1988, the same year as that footage you just watched, that Brian would create the character of Buckethead. He was watching the very poorly received Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers, and immediately went out after the movie and bought a Michael Myers-esque expressionless white mask. Famously, of course, that same night, he was eating a bucket of chicken, and as Brian himself says, quote, I was eating it, and I put the mask on and the bucket on my head. I went to the mirror. I just said, Buckethead. That's Buckethead right there. It was just one of those things. After that, I wanted to be that thing all the time. In the same year, Brian had submitted what is likely the first ever official Buckethead recording, a song called Brazos, not to be confused with something else, to a guitar player magazine contest. The song won runner-up with the editor writing, quote, 
an astonishingly skilled guitarist and bassist, he demonstrates post-Paul Gilbert speed and accuracy filtered through very kinky harmonic sensibilities. His psychotronic, demonic edge is very, very far removed from the cliches of classical metal and rock. A real talent to watch, also known as Buckethead. The editor of Guitar Player at that time, and I'm sure I'm going to fuck up this pronunciation, Joss Obrett, took a keen liking to Brian, encouraging him to take a guitar as far as he could and make the most of his extreme talent. Uh, they eventually became pretty close with Brian moving in with him a few years afterwards. Just a year later, in 1989, Brian made what I believe is, uh, up until just a few years ago, his last public appearance as Brian before becoming Buckethead 24-7 in the December 1989 issue of Guitar Magazine. What's notable about this is that his feature in this issue of the magazine uses one of the only quote-unquote Buckethead unmasked photos out there and certainly the most widely circulated photo of Brian. Another thing to note, take a look at his pinky finger. While some will say that this is his real finger as uh, he's an alien, that is actually just a finger extension and you can find footage out there of him using it on other occasions as well. Shortly after this feature, around 1990, Brian formed Deli Creeps, an avant-garde quartet with vocalist Maximum Bob, who appears on a number of Buckethead records, and drummer Pinchface, who has also done a number of other projects with Bucket over the years, and he's also a real estate agent, so if you're looking to buy a house from a Deli Creep, there's your chance. It wasn't until 1992, though, that Brian released the first official Buckethead record, Buckethead Land, via acclaimed composer John Zorn's Japanese label, Avant. The album is a two-disc concept record focused on Buckethead's fictitious amusement park, obviously Buckethead Land, with the album being divided into quote-unquote sections of the park, including Giant Robot, which is also a running theme throughout many various Bucket projects, Bucket Bot's Jig, and Slaughter Zone. Since releasing Buckethead Land, he has released over 300 albums, with the majority of those in just the past 10 years or so. He has also contributed to a number of soundtracks for major movies, including Last Action Hero, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Mortal Kombat, and Saw 2. Bucket has also collaborated with a number of other artists, including Les Claypool of Primus, funk legend Bootsy Collins, Faith No More's Mike Patton, legendary actor from Lord of the Rings, Viggo Mortensen, and of course, most famously, his nearly half a decade long stint in Guns N' Roses. Allegedly, Buckethead had been on the hunt for a very specific Leatherface doll, and around Christmas 1999, Axl Rose invited him over and gifted the doll to him, with Bucket assuming that to be a sign to join the band. In 2000, drummer Brian Brain Montia, who has worked with Bucket on quite a few projects, most notably the band Praxis, along with Bill Laswell, also joined the band, uh, replacing Josh Fries. When recalling how Buckethead officially ended up joining GNR, Brain said, quote, I think Axel and Buckethead went to Disneyland and they signed in the Haunted Mansion. I think as he was on the ride, he signed the contract. I mean, you can't make this up. Bucket's time in GNR, though, was rather off the rails. Uh, maybe we'll do a whole video focusing on that at some point. But one funny thing to mention is that at one point, he insisted on a chicken coop being built in the studio if they wanted to keep him in the band. According to esteemed a and legend Tom Zutout, a few weeks after the chicken coop was constructed, that wasn't enough. So Bucket had a TV put into the chicken coop so that he could watch hardcore corn for inspiration. When Axel eventually found out, he was quite upset and had a talk with him, but that's actually not the reason the Bucket had left the band. According to his manager at the time, he left due to the band's inability to tour and to finish Chinese Democracy. Axel released a statement about Bucket leaving, saying, quote, During his tenure with the band, Buckethead has been creating uncertainty and confusion and making it virtually impossible to move forward with recording, rehearsals, and live plans with confidence. Buckethead's transient lifestyle has made it impossible for even his closest friends to have nearly any form of communication with him whatsoever. 
At one point, Ozzy, of course, also had discussions about having Buckethead in his band, but declined after realizing that he wouldn't perform out of character, saying, quote, I tried out that Buckethead guy. I met with him and asked him to work with me, but only if he got rid of the fucking bucket. So I came back a bit later, and he's wearing this green fucking Martian's hat thing. I said, look, just be yourself. He told me his name was Brian, so I said that's what I'd call him. He says, no one calls me Brian except my mother. So I said, pretend I'm your mom then. I haven't even got out of the room, and I'm already playing fucking mind games with the guy. What happens if one day he's gone, and there's a note saying, I've been beamed up? Don't get me wrong, he's a great player. He plays like a motherfucker. Since leaving GNR, Bucket has released literally hundreds of albums and made countless appearances, and in 2017, he finally appeared for the first time since the creation of the Buckethead character as himself in an interview with the self-help podcast Coming Alive, revealing his heart condition, saying, quote, Well, really recently, my heart, I have a heart problem where my heart beats out of rhythm. It's been doing it for a long time, but recently it just kicked up into a really intense... I really didn't know what was going on. I just tried to deal with it and let it do what it did, and then eventually it would stop, but it got really intense, so I went to the doctor, and they said, oh, you're on the verge of having a stroke. I'm like, oh, because I felt so good prior to having it, I was doing pretty well and everything. He also reveals in the same podcast that he had a procedure done, but it hasn't fully resolved his problems, so he relies on medication. He also notes that the day after his procedure, he recorded a record with a friend of his saying, quote, the day after I had that procedure, I recorded a record with my friend. I just lied in bed and recorded it. I just felt like I'm here still. I don't want to sit around and mope. Luckily, he has recovered enough to continue touring and recording, having released over two dozen albums this year, 2022 alone. A majority of his stuff can be found online through Bandcamp, and there's also over 60 of his albums available on the streaming services. All right, though, I gotta run. My fiance just called me in, and she wants to reenact some of what goes down in Buckethead's chicken coop. So that's gonna do it for me, but thanks so much for watching. Feel free to subscribe if you wanna see more. Have a happy new year, and I will see you next time.